a conversation on improving the foster care system and finding a sense of home. To learn more about First Place for Youth, visit firstplaceforyouth.org. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Great. 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 Well, we're going to have a conversation about foster care, life after foster care, and First Place for Youth. So I'd love for you to talk as openly and candidly and freely as you ever have and be at ease. We're just having a conversation among friends. And what we're going to do is hopefully change some people's ideas and opinions and how they create the right kind of resources and the right kind of supports for young people like yourselves and all the ones that are going to follow after you. And so with that said, one of the things I'm going to start out by saying, um, I heard a young lady speak at an event we held a year ago and she looked at the audience. She was used to be in the First Place for Youth program. And she said, to all the young people in here that are going through it, just know it's going to get better. It's going to get a lot better. And so when she said that, it just made me, it reminded me that um, foster, foster care is just a season in your life. It's not the whole life. It's just a chapter in a book, not the whole book. So let's get into this. And um, good to see all of you look beautiful. And, and handsome and so just say your names out loud just so I can make sure I have them etched in my mind throughout our interview. We'll start here at the edge. Uh, my name is Tari. My name is Niasha. Niasha. Nice uh, and loud too by the way. Don't be shy. Go ahead. <laughs> my name is Sky Celine. Sky Celine. Mm -hmm. My name is Mike Keith. Nice to meet all of you. And all of you have been in the First Place Reef program or are you in the First Place Reef program as we speak? Yes. 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 All right. So let me just start out with an easy question. Here's a softball question for you. If you could change anything in the foster care system, what would it be? Mm. And go first, Sky Celine. I wish that they would allow us to meet the people that we're going with before placing us with them. A lot of the times they just place us with these people. We don't know who they are. That's very scary coming from traumatizing situations. Absolutely, absolutely. Anybody else? Yes, Ty. Um, I think the foster care system should take the time to thoroughly check if someone is fit to be a foster parent, not just physically, but mentally. There are a lot of adults who are foster parents and end up abusing the children placed in their care. They end up adding trauma to a child who was already taken from a bad situation, then end up placing them in a home where the abuse continues. I would know from my own personal experience. Absolutely. Thank you for that, Ty. I would say listening to the youth, I think oftentimes, like our voices aren't being heard. We'll, we'll speak and we'll speak and we'll speak and they're not listening to us. And I feel like if they actually listen and take the time to actually hear what we're saying, it would really be beneficial. Yeah. Mikey? I believe a great change would be raise awareness around resources that are available to foster youth and families surrounding that said foster youth. Thank you for that. Let me tell you, I heard something recently and I believe and I thought it was really profound. Someone said that sometimes l being put in foster care can be more traumatizing than spending life in jail and dealing with, the, with the, some of the stressors that happen when you're incarcerated. That's something that resonated for you some way. What, 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 what comes to mind when you hear that? Um, so when I was put into foster care, it felt like I was already coming from a traumatizing situation. And it felt like when I went into these group homes and foster homes, it felt like I was basically like even more in trouble, but for speaking up. You know, it's like I'm getting out of my home like, and hope that I'll get help and hope that I'll be seen. Um, and I didn't get that help. And I feel like it yeah, left me in a place where I really just didn't want anything to do with adults at that Absolutely. point. Absolutely. Or any family. Now, how old are you? I'm going to start with you, Mike Keith, and you go down the line. How old are all of you? Just so I can get a sense of where you are in life. I'm 20 years old. 20? I'm 20. 20. 20. I'm 21. 21. I will be 22 this year. Nice, nice. So the reason why I asked that, the question about age, I'd love for you all to share. Share your thoughts on what should a person who's 18 years old and thinking about transitioning from foster care be thinking about? What are some of the challenges for a person at 18 years old? I think, I think going through their own traumas as well as having to navigate life, I feel like we're still going through what we did, did, dealt with when we were children, um, even teens, because I got out when I was 16. So, um, you know, dealing with all that trauma as well as having to navigate life and be successful is really hard. 
um, and sometimes we don't have the support system that can really help us. So sometimes we're just like struggling, you know, as an 18 year old, not knowing where to go, not knowing what to do, not knowing how to get there, not, how, not knowing what path to take and how to even navigate that path, honestly. Anyone else want to weigh in on that question? Yeah, I have yes, to say. Um, in my opinion, I think the biggest challenge foster youth face when they turn 18 is stability. 18 is considered a legal adult, but no one has everything figured out at that age. You're fresh out of high school and just now entering the real world, as per people say. What else? What are 18-year-old youth exiting foster care thinking about? What are they stressing about? What are they talking about? Stability is a big one. Stability. Where am I going to go? Who do I go with? That was a big question for me. I definitely asked that question myself too. I was, I already knew I was going to go to college. I knew I was going to go to Casa de LA, but I did not know how. I did not know what housing, I did not know what apartment, I did not know who family to go to, I didn't have that. So I was struggling. I really did not know how to get to school, honestly. I was living two hours away at the time, so it was really hard for me to figure out how to get to school, honestly. And not having any stability, not knowing family members, not knowing friends, even not knowing anybody like resources or programs, it's just, you're just like stuck, honestly. Yeah. And it doesn't help if you have a social worker who does not help you. Um, I was, so two weeks before I turned 18, um, my social worker was going on vacation. She was going on a cruise and I was homeless. And I had to couch surf. I ended up getting, on the day of my 18th birthday, I had to get two jobs. I got a second job because I was like, well, if I'm not gonna have a place to stay, I might as well be working, making money, trying to save so that I can have a place to stay. Thank you for that. Let me tell you, the, the last thing that should happen is that someone turns 18 and leaves foster care into homelessness with all those questions and doubts and, um, and wonderings about what the future may look like. My Keith, it's on you, sir. As a foster youth who was planning to pursue further education, but faced problems within high school, I wasn't able to see a four-year university as an option. And therefore, I resorted to a community college and housing stability being one of the most um, troubling issues for foster youth aging out of college. Um, for me, that was a big issue and a lot of my friends who also aged out, uh, being that community college does not provide dorms as most four-year universities do. And I feel as though first place providing me with housing stability greatly um, improved my performance in community college. It greatly improved my hope in myself and believing that I will be able to transfer to four-year colleges of my dreams. And without first place for youth, I think that without first place for youth, I think that it would be a lot uh, different. I would be, think that it would be a lot harder. Okay. Thank you for that. So you said something I want to use. Um, I'm going to piggyback on that idea and ask you all a question um, about something you said earlier and tie it into what my Keith just said. And earlier, all of you talked about how you were taken and put into different placements and different and other people's homes. And maybe that word home is used too loosely. Because when I think of home, home is a place where there's lots of love, nurturing, people genuinely caring for you unconditionally, and making sure that everything that you need, you're given. How have you all created your own sense of home since coming into contact with First Place for Youth? That's the big one for me was peace. I think not having peace, not having your own space. I feel like at first I thought it was space that I wanted. I craved space. I craved just having something that I could call my own. But I, I realized that it was actually peace that I actually wanted. I wanted to just be able to just breathe and be able to just be able to just say that this is mine and I can do whatever I want and not have any inter interruptions or have anyone bothering me, just be able to just breathe, honestly, peace. Yeah. Mikey. With the introduction to a couple of my mentors through means of first place for youth, I started to think of home as more so of a support system and those who enrich me and not necessarily a location. And right now what that looks like is calling up my education and employment specialist whenever I have an upcoming interview and he gives me tips and giving him the news that I ended up getting the job 
through the use of the tips that he's given me. And also, like I mentioned earlier, um, the UCLA Tires program, being able to meet with my therapist on a weekly basis over many, many years, talking to him um, feels like I'm at home, despite the locations that I'm talking to him at over Zoom uh, have changed from foster placement to being, me being in my car at one point when I was homeless, but you know, still hopping on Zoom to meet with him. That is what feels like home to me, talking to those that have been a common denominator throughout my different placements. Definitely. Ty? Um, a home to me should feel like a place of comfort. It should also uh, be just a place of just stability. Um, and also, prior to just coming into first place, I didn't know that a home was supposed to be a safe place, that you deserve to have running water and no pest infestations, and that you know, you're able to decorate your room the way that you want it. And just, it's supposed to be a place where you can just be you. And I did, not, I did not know that until coming into program, so, yeah. All the things that you just mentioned, running water, a place with no rodent or bug infestation, you know, a place that's warm, those, that's the bare minimum. That's, that's what you're supposed to give every young person, every child. Um, so if that's your, your bar, your standard, that's still insufficient, that's still neglect where you have to go to the next level is nurturing, where you let, let young people test and learn, make mistakes, fall down, and then be right there to pick them back up and watch them every step of the way. That's the commitment that we all should have for every young, that's what every young person and every child deserves. So, I totally hear you loud and clear on that. Let me ask you the question, why are programs like First Place for Youth important? How are programs like First Place helping young people as well as a larger society that knows nothing about foster care understand and believe that more is possible. Um, if it wasn't for first place for youth I would not be in school right now. Um, I'd probably be working, I'd probably still be homeless, probably be hopping from house to house. So because of first place for youth I'm able to go to school and I'm able to do a lot of different activities. I have a place to stay, it's stable, I'm growing. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Thank you. So for me, um, I think it's really important because it helped me with my path. I think I was I was commuting two hours to go to school, so it was like two hours one way, two hours another way, like four hours basically, and it was taking a large toll on me mentally, physically. Um, my grades were showing that as well. I mean, I was still trying to maintain my, my A's and B's, but it was really, really hard. Um, but the biggest problem was that like, I didn't like, so like after I graduated college, I was just like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know, I don't know where I was gonna live. I don't know where I was um, going to like, I just didn't see a path basically um, outside of just going to school. Cause I think I've just been going to school my whole life. I just felt like it was like something that was comfortable for me, right? Um, and so first place for youth, it kind of helped me just know that I can talk to my YA, I can talk to my EE about those programs that um, can further help me, because I want to be a lawyer, so it helps me that do, doing, during that path, because it is really hard to be a lawyer. It's not like you can just apply and get into law school. You know, there's like so many internships, there's so many things you have to do and criteria you have to have in order to do that. And so just basically just having a program that's going to help you be successful, just help you give you those programs and help you give you those resources and help you give you that internship that's going to help you further succeed in life and just give you those little breadcrumbs that really are really beneficial in life. You know? Yeah, I gotta ask, why were you commuting two hours each way? Where were you living? Because I was living in San, I was living in San Bernardino, and so I was taking the train because I don't, I don't have a car, and so it was two hours to get to school, and then it was two hours to get back. And why were you willing to do all of that? Because I did not want to live the life that I've had lived for my, for my very beginning of life. I didn't want to struggle. I didn't want to not have stability. I wanted to, I craved stability, like that was the biggest thing that I want was stability and peace. And so once I was able to get stability through First Place for Youth, it really made a huge difference in my grades and my, and my mental health. I was able to go back to a therapist. I didn't have a therapist for like two, three years. And so I, my mental health was also deteriorating also while going to school. And that's not beneficial. The majority of students will just drop out, you know? Yeah. And so having First Place for Youth helped me get those resources like mental, a mental health 
um, like a therapist or like an internship or like those mini events just to have you like a, a, they have like a garden zen type of event that we had that was just like you just you're just doing the garden you know and just like that mental break that you need and crave because you're just doing, dealing with so much in life and in the past as well yeah thank you for sharing that time my key i believe first place for youth progress towards admission is very important because a lot of youth are impo impacted by the foster care system a lot more than people may imagine or know. I remember growing up, I felt as though I was the only kid in foster care and for many years until I ended up going to a foster youth event and I found one of my basketball teammates there. And that opened my eyes to how many youth are being impact impacted by the foster care system. And I think first place, setting aside and designating resources to help those foster youth is setting up society for a better next generation in the years to come. Ty, you want to finish up on this question? Yeah. Um, so I think programs like First Place for Youth are very vital to the community because um, affordable housing, it's, I mean, housing in general in this day and age is not like really affordable. And it's like for us and other youth, you know, we might come into this program, we might not know how to do certain things. We might not know how to do laundry or cook or clean and it's like, you know, or how to maintain an apartment. And you come into this program and you, you learn all of those things. And then you can also probably teach someone else those things. And given my experience, I before coming into program, I was unfortunately in a place where I wasn't able to learn how to do basic life skills. So that's why I think programs like this are very important because everyone should know how to do basic life skills. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can I add something yes, to please. that? Um, like she said, basic life skills. So it's like when you're living in first place for youth, you have to go to school and work, and you also have to maintain an apartment. So learning all those skills, it's not easy. It took me, it's still learning, but it took me about a year to really get, you know, everything together, to work, to learn how to work out, to learn how to clean my apartment, to do my laundry, to make sure I'm studying enough, to make sure I'm getting enough sleep, to make sure all these things you have to do as an adult, you're doing it at like 18, 19 years old. And I think because of First Place for Youth, I'm able to learn those skills so that when I do get an apartment, I'll, like, I already have that part down. Yeah. But it was, it was a struggle, you know? And if I didn't have my EE and my YA and my other social worker like telling me, you got this, you could keep doing it, just keep going, you're gonna figure it out, you're gonna struggle for a little bit, but it will get easier. I don't think, you know, I'd be as, I'd be as successful as I am right now. Well, it's clear all of you have some amazing uh, levels of resilience with all that you've gone through and all the successes that you've had and the work that I know you still have ahead of you and all the big goals that you plan for yourself what gives you hope success and peace I always want to be just be happy you know and I felt like if I just just go through life and take every step by day by day I'm going to achieve that you know I'm going to be able to be successful and be able to gain the biggest amount of peace as possible. So. Setting my eyes on a bright goal in the future and having my support system around me to help me get towards that goal is what gives me hope. For me, that looks like transferring to a four-year university of my dreams? Well, um, for me, what gives me hope is seeing humanity come together in time of need. It's just nice seeing people just come together and speak up about all of the bad and just people being wrongfully hurt in this world. So um, that gives me hope that shows that um, no matter what, like bad in this world, there are people who still genuinely care. Yeah. So that gives me hope. Well, I don't like asking young people questions I'm not willing to answer myself. So I'll also answer this question too. What gives me hope, just piggyback on what Ty just said, is that your generation seems to be moving and shaking and adamant about changing the world as it is for the better. Possibly much more aggressively than any other generation. So that is exciting. And I gotta tell you, I'm so proud of seeing so-called Generation Z do their thing. Um, the other thing is, I don't always get opportunities to sit with young people and talk like this. 
I miss it. Um, as First Place expands around the country, um, on a day-to-day -day basis, I don't always come into contact with you. And of course, COVID changed a lot of stuff too. We all don't get together and congregate in certain places like we once did, and we gotta get back to that. And so I miss that. So this is wonderful for me, wonderful for me just to be able to sit here with you and talk. So I gotta tell you, what gives me hope is seeing all of you. And, um, and make sure you use me to go after all your goals. That's what I'm here for. What kind of impact do you want to leave on this world? Hmm, good question, Ty. So Ty, to answer your question, I would start by saying everywhere that I've gone to lead organizations, build new organizations, even when I was a teacher, I tried to be in places where I can be of the most use. That's the number one. And at my core, I'm a protector of those who, who are, don't have all the capabilities of protecting themselves. So I don't know if I can give you a quantifiable measurement of what I want to accomplish before I leave this world, but just know I promise you I'm going to be in the place where I can be of the most use and the greatest protector that's possible. Yeah. Yeah. What would you say to an 18-year-old right now who's about to leave foster care? What would you and imagine if it was yourself you were talking to, what would you tell that 18 year old now, after all the things that you've seen and done and accomplished, now that you're all in your 20s? Um, I, would, I would say it only took me three years. Um, for when I was in it, I thought it was gonna be forever. I thought it was gonna be like infinity. I thought it was just gonna constantly hurt me and constantly be something that's gonna be weighing down on my shoulders and I was never ever gonna be successful or ever have mental clarity, um, but it only took me three years to finally be able to say, I know what peace feels like, I know what stability feels like, um, and I have a whole life ahead of me. I have decades, centuries, and it only took me three years, so. Yeah, so it gets better, and it doesn't take a lot of time to get better. It doesn't better. take a lot of time. Okay. I wish I could say the same, but it took me, let me see, I'm 20, I got into foster care when I was 14. I didn't want to say up until last year, um, I finally had a moment of just cool and calm. Nothing was going on. I was finally able to be a 19-year-old. But it wasn't anything like a real 19-year-old. I was still traumatized. I was still having to deal with... It's funny because it's like you get, you're given the basic necessities, like you're given an apartment, and then you think like, oh, I should be good now, right? I have nothing to complain about. I have a home, I have food. Wrong. You don't realize all the mental like, struggle that comes to you when you're finally in a place of like, peace. Because you just, you've been at force for so long and you've been like, going to the next thing, next thing, next thing. My life was so like, go to the next thing, go to the next thing. Like, there was just so much going on that I could never sit with any of the trauma that I had dealt with. Um, but I would tell myself that it does get better and it did get better. It will take time though, and you're gonna have to, um, iron sharpens iron, and you're gonna have to go through those hard times to get better, to get smarter, to become the person you are, and without those experiences, I wouldn't be the person that I am, and I wouldn't have the light that I have. Um, so I'm thankful, so to be thankful for the struggle, because you know that's where your personality is developed, so that's where your character is built. Mm -hmm. So to be thankful in the struggle, be appreciative of it, even though it's it's hard, but also to you know rejoice in like the good times. Yeah. Yeah. Just to piggyback off of what uh, what Sky mentioned, foster you do faced uh, foster you do face a lot of adversity growing up in the foster care system, and with that adversity comes a lot of trauma and baggage that may tag along uh, throughout their journey. However also throughout their journey, they're also facing insecurity in regarding to basic needs. And so I think it's very important to highlight how when aging out of foster care at 18 and they're provided with basic needs, a lot of that baggage and trauma ends up resurfacing. And I think it's very important uh, to once again take advantage of like the mental health services that are available yeah. to 18-year-olds that are still within the extended foster youth 
uh, system to address that trauma mm -hmm. that they've picked up along the way. And also, I would say, two 18-year-olds that are, that are planning on continuing or even starting therapy, that it isn't too late, that therapy is fine. Therapy is not um, necessarily always a correction for people who have something that's wrong with their mind. Uh, it's totally fine to even go to therapy when you're feeling great. You don't have to go to therapy when you're facing a life crisis. And I think the, the fruits that therapy bear can be very, very helpful regarding you reaching your goals. I, earlier I mentioned that one of my goals or it's, one of my main goals is to transfer to a four-year university. Um, on my college applications, they don't necessarily ask me what's my mental health looking like. However, taking care of my mental health has a great impact on my grades. Mm -hmm. It has a great impact on my relationship with my professors. And take advantage of their Absolutely. Yeah, a mentor of mine years ago, and I listened to them, said, uh, Therapy is the best gift you can give yourself. Yeah. So looking at it that way. Mm -hmm. Anything else? I would also say appreciate the little things. Uh -huh. um, I feel like that's sometimes overlooked, but I try to appreciate literally like getting five dollars. Like appreciate the little things, you know, because it makes a huge difference in like your life and your mental health. Just being able mm -hmm. to be like, I was able to buy this pair of jeans. I was able yes. to buy this pair of shirt, you know, I was able to buy my own fruits because as a foster youth, a lot of the things were controlled. And so being able to have that freedom to be able to do little things like that is really important to, to appreciate those things. It's really important. That's a really good point. There are so many times where I look in my closet and I'm just like, yeah, same. I got all this. I got like, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, or like you, your car, like, because driving was such a hard thing for me because we also don't have anybody to teach us how to drive. Right. So, like, that was, oh my God, the times that I cried about that because it's like, if my mom was here, if my dad was here, I wouldn't have to be paying this instructor to teach me and this instructor who didn't have patience with me. So, it took me like a year longer to get my license, but like, I look at my, like you said, like, we look back at the things that we have now. And it's like we didn't have the chance to get that when we were younger. Mm -hmm. So it's like the fact that we're able to get it now and like we're doing it. Like very a lot of appreciation in that. Yeah. Not only not only like appreciating the small physical things, but also the emotional things. Like for example, I got a text from my YA after shortly after I entered program and she called well no, she text she texted to check up on me and I responded something along the lines of is everything okay? Like, what, as in, why are you texting me? Why are you checking up on me? And she was like, oh no, it's fine. I was just checking in to see how you're doing. I, I, that was very heart, heartwarming because I'm not used to getting those type of texts. I'm usually used to always being on guard or if I'm contacted, it's all right, what problem do I have to solve now? And being contacted just to see how I'm doing is, yeah. is a, one of those little things that I have learned to appreciate and do. Yeah. Have yeah, yeah. We it's all need really to be good. checked in on everybody, and it never ends. So, just know that we all need and deserve that. Oh, also acknowledging how far we've come. I do that a lot. I feel like yeah. us as foster youth have a hard time thinking about that because we don't see our trauma as a challenge. We see our trauma as just something. Yeah. I saw my trauma like my yeah. trauma is just something like this is something I had to deal with. Like, but no. I did that, but it's like I'm also going to school. Like I'm doing things that a normal, you know, human are not normal. Nobody's normal, but I'm doing it, and I did it through the trauma. We all did it through the trauma. I think that's like that's huge. Yes. You know, and we're strong and like we're exactly. confident. I think that's amazing. Absolutely, absolutely. Doing it through the trauma. Thank you all for for showing up and showing out today. To learn more about First Place for Youth, visit firstplaceforyouth.org.